around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Chester, huh? I'm not going to be hard on him, Kitty, but if a man isn't doing his job... I'm well, a great should. match right, Kitty. By the other day, I was riding through Cottonwood Grove, and there was Chester, big as life, lying under a tree with a straw stuck in his mouth. What day was that, Doc? What day was that? Let me see. I was on my way to Reb Morgan's place. See, that youngest kid of Reb's got himself wrapped up in a roll of barbed wire. Oh, I thought my. I would never get him out. What day, Doc? Oh, what day? Now, let me think. Now, that's Thursday. It was Thursday. Yeah, that's the day he was supposed to clean the rifles, get a new stirrup leather for my saddle, and do a half a dozen other things he hasn't been doing for the last ten days. Well, what did he say, Doc? Well, he didn't even see me. He just lay there staring up at the sky. <laughs> Matt, I think I know what it is. What? Chester's got spring fever. Spring fever? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she might be right, man. But she's been having the weather for it. <laughs> yeah, I've got a touch of it myself. Ah, uh, Chester's going to have to straighten out. This has been going on for weeks. Uh, uh, I'll see you two later. Huh? Now, you be easy on him, Matt. All right, Kitty. Chester, I'm surprised to see you here. I thought you'd be lying out under a tree somewhere about now. Under a tree? Uh-huh. What? No, sir. I've been waiting around for you, Mr. Dillon. Oh? Well, good, because I want to talk to you. Uh, Mr. Dillon, did you ever sit and watch a beaver build a dam? Did I ever what? Watch a beaver build a dam. <clears throat> Chester, this is exactly what I want to talk to you about. There's a lot of work to be done around here, and you're not getting it done. Yes, sir, I know, but I was just starting to explain about that. You were? Yes, sir. Uh, see, for most of the year, a stream runs in one direction, don't it? And along comes the beaver, and he builds his dam, and the water kindly starts to go in the other direction. Uh, at least for a while it does. What's this got to do with your not doing your work, Chester? Well, that's the way my blood is. Every year about this time, my blood kindly dams up and starts to go the other way, and and I feel different. Chester, come here. Mm -hmm. Now sit down. Go on. <laughs> All right. Out with it. <laughs> Mr. Don, there's a lady at that Dodge house waiting to see me. Well, what's so terrible about that? Well, nothing, I guess. Except she come here from St. Louis expecting me to marry her. She what? Chester, what have you been doing? Well, I've been writing letters to some ladies out of town. What ladies? Oh, some ladies, Mr. Dillon. See, I run across a bunch of St. Louis newspapers and there was all these ads and well, me feeling like I'm doing all, I just kind of wrote to several of them. And you've never even seen this woman then, huh? No, sir, I ain't. Well, well, what did you say in the letters? Well, I just told her about myself. The truth? <clears throat> well, 
here and there, I might have stretched things in mind. Well, what you're trying to tell me, Chester, is that you wrote a bunch of lies, and now one of these women is here to call your hand. Is that it? Would you go talk to her, Mr. Dunn, please? You mean you want me to get you out of it? Yes, sir. Well, Chester, I... All right, what's her name? Mrs. Corinne Gatesley. Mrs.? She's a widow lady. Oh, fine. You, you want me to tell her that you've left town? We don't know where you are, something like that, is that it? Well, no, sir. Not exactly. Then what? Well, if you don't mind too awful much, Mr. Dillon, would you tell her you're Chester Proudfoot? That I? Well, see, then you can go on about how you ain't going to marry her and all that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't understand, Wait a minute, wait a minute Chester. But, Mr. Dillon, I sent her your picture. What? It was awful good likeness. Remember that one of you standing in Mr. Titus's studio holding that bowler hat in your hand? Well, where are you going, Mr. Dillon? Chester, I'm going to tell her the truth right now, and you'll see that you're here when I get back. Yes, sir. Oh, dear, I wish I had not never learned to write. <laughs> Yes, who's there? Chester, is that you? Uh, uh, it's Matt Dillon. Yeah, what are you... Oh, Chester, darling, you tried to fool Corinne, didn't you? You're a naughty boy. Uh, m- Miss Gatesley, m- ma'am, I came now, here to... Chester, you needn't call me that. Just call me Corinne. Well, no, look, ma'am, there's been a little mix-up. Mr. Proudfoot is, uh been kind of playing a game with you. Game? I don't understand. Well, I'm Matt Dillon, and Chester Proudfoot, well, he's another man. He he sent you my picture by mistake. Dillon? Seems I've heard that name before. Well, yeah, you possibly you have, ma'am. I'm the marshal here in Dodge. The marshal? That's very interesting, marshal. The way things have worked out, I may have need of you. Marshal Dillon, I want to show you something. These letters. You see, these were written by this Proudfoot person. Would you please read a few passages? Well, I... I... Uh. Yes, I see. What would you conclude from that, Marshal? Well, he's expecting some money to come his way soon. What else? And uh, he's not above marrying the right woman. Marshal, would you please tell Mr. Proudfoot that I'm waiting for him to call on me? Yes, ma'am. I, uh, I'll tell him that. Good day, Marshal. <clears throat> Good day, Miss Gaisley. should get married. Well, that may be, Doc, but I don't think this is the woman for him. Well, why not, Matt? Well, for one thing, she's sure nothing to look at. She's taller than Chester, and she weighs as much as I do. Oh, is it? Well, oh, Matt, this is wonderful. I can hardly wait for the wedding. Well, don't count on it, Doc. Well, where is Chester, Matt? <laughs> He's hiding out down at the office. Yeah, well, let's get him up here, huh? And drink a toast to this, uh, just in case. Oh, Doc, stop. Now, could you? I've known Chester a long time, and I want him to know how happy I am for him. Doc, you're just making fun of him. No, I'm not. I may even deliver their first child free. Oh. Matt, what are you going to do about this? Well, I'll let Chester worry for a few days just to teach him a lesson. and then I'll try to get her to leave town. 
Well, how does he explain all this? <laughs> He'll never believe me, Kitty. But the trouble is, he told her he had money coming in. Mm. I've known a few women like that. Well, you know, Matt, there, there is such a thing as breach of promise. Yeah, if he only hadn't mentioned the money. Matt, wait a minute. What? This woman, you say she's big. Does she have red hair? Uh, yeah, I think she does. She say where she was from? Well, Chester said she's from St. Louis. Why? Well, there's a woman I saw a few times in St. Louis working in a saloon. Then a year or so later, the sheriff was looking for her. Yeah. They found the bodies of several men she had married. They'd all been shot and robbed. Well, did they ever find her? Yeah. But they couldn't prove anything on her and had to let her go. Her name then was Bertha Hoskowitz. Would she know you? No. I'd sure remember her. Good. Now, she's staying at the Dodge house. You see if you can get a look at her. I'm sure. You gonna take her in, Matt? There's no way I can yet. But I'll wire St. Louis and see what they say about her. And in the meantime, there's one thing pretty sure. What? If she is Bertha Hoskowitz, she's planning Chester for her next victim. Fine doggone thing. If he don't want me to read him, he just don't need to send me after him. But to let on to Mr. Hightower that I read his telegraph, well... It come in all right, Mr. Dillon. Here. And it ain't been opened. Oh, thanks, Chester. I'll be sitting way over here, Mr. Dillon, where I can't read it. Huh. Yeah, just like Kitty said... No need to fear on me reading your telegraphs anymore, Mr. Dillon. Mr. Hightower made that real plain. Oh, Chester, will you quit your grumbling? When there's something I want you to know, I'll tell you. You probably think I mind some, Mr. Dillon, but I don't. It don't bother me at all. Not one bit. I know, I know. What are you going now, Mr. Dillon? Or, or ain't I supposed to know about that, neither? Have you seen your lady friend yet? No, and I don't intend to. I hope she's on the first train out of here today. You know, you're going to find her a lot harder to get rid of than you think, Chester. I'll see you later. Mr. Bodkin? Oh, well, good morning, Marshal. What brings you into the bank so early? Look, Mr. Bodkin, there's something I'd like to ask you to do for me. Well, anything, anything you say, Marshal. Well, this is going to involve the use of some of your money. Oh, uh, well, now, Marshal, that doesn't really belong to me. Right? I know that, Mr. Bodkin. Well, uh, uh, just how much money, Marshal Dillon? Five thousand dollars. Five thousand? Well, Marshal Dillon, people leave their money here on trust, and it's up to me. Mr. To... Bodkin, let's go into your office, and I'll tell you what this is all about, huh? Oh, all right, but $5,000 is a lot of money, Marshal. I know that, Mr. Bodkin. Matt, I've been looking all over you. Uh, Kitty and I saw that Hoskowitz woman going into your office a few minutes ago. Oh? Yeah, you better keep her away from Chester. She's liable to convince him he has to marry her. Well, that's what I want her to do. I want Chester to think that he really does have to marry this woman. Look, Doc, I tell you what. Huh? You go find Kitty and tell her about this and see that she helps out, huh? Oh, but Chester might get killed. Well, I'll see that he does. Now, you go tell Kitty, and then both of you come right back to the office as soon as you can. Chester, but you come out of that tail. No, ma'am, I ain't going to even stop that. Miss Jason? ma'am, you... Chester. Oh, good morning, Marshal Dillon. I've come to get my loved one. Chester... 
What are you doing in that cell? Well, I, after what I'd done, Mr. Dillon, I, I figured I ought to be locked up. Where are the keys? I got them right here in my pocket. Hand them over. Yes, sir. Here you are. Look, I would like to get married to you, ma'am, but you see how things are. There, there ain't nothing I can do about... I just can't... Possibly. Mr. Dillon? Would you like to come out now, Chester? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you, Marshal. It's all right. Let's go on out to the front office, sir. Huh? Ah, there he is, Kitty. He's a happy bride. Girl. Hello, Chester. Is this the big day? Well, no. Say, don't I know you, dearie? Oh, not that I know of. Oh, I guess not. Oh, look at this poor boy. He's scared to death. Chester, darling, see how your little Corinne's trembling all over? <laughs> yeah, oh, my God, oh, just look at that. Don't do I have to go through with this? I never really meant nothing by writing all them letters. I was just having a little fun. Chester, you can't toy with a woman's heart that way. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Chester. I am, Miss Kitty. Honest, I am. Miss Gaisley, ma'am. Yes, love. You don't want me now, do you? I don't look like much. I ain't had hardly no schooling at all. All I know is helping Mr. Dillon, and that's all I really want to do. Every year at this time, I, I get these crazy ideas about women and maybe having a home of my own and spending your money on someone you love. Money. They say that's Oh, I told you an awful lie about that. Well, I ain't got no money at all. That that was all part of the... Well, that was just, just talk like the rest of it. What are you saying? No money. No, ma'am. No money. Oh, uh, Matt, is uh, Chester in here? Yeah, he's here, Mr. Barkin. Oh, there you are, Chester. Well, my boy, have I got good news for you. Oh, Mr. Barkin, I sure could use some good news. Well, then look in this bag. There's $5,000 in it, and it's all yours. Now, now, now don't fool me, Mr. Barkin. I got enough trouble this day. Well, I am not fooling. It's yours. 5000 Chester's? Yes, ma'am. He inherited it. No, I didn't. No, I did oh, not. Oh, yes, no, 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 no. From I... an old man down in Texas. Who, 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 who? What old man? Grandpa Drum. Remember him? Grandpa Drum. Grandpa Drum. Now, why did he have to go and do that? Oh, isn't that wonderful, Chester? Now you can get married just the way you always wanted to. Mr. Dillon, I don't want to leave here. I'm making coffee for you, holding your horse, and then, and, and and I'll get that saddle fixed right away, I promise Chester, you. you don't have any choice. You've asked for this woman's hand. He sure has. No, Chester, dear. Do you want me to read these letters out loud? No, no, no. I'll... I'll marry you. Now you're talking, Chester. Well, let's all go over to my place and we'll celebrate. That's a good idea, Kitty. And, Chester, it's on me. Every last drink. Thank you, Miss Kitty. You always was nice to me. Chester. Well, then why don't you call it off? I can't do that, Doc. I was hoping I was wrong, but here, look at this. Huh? What do you mean? What is it? On the telegram? Yeah, this time from Wichita. From Wichita? Let me read this. The woman you describe is Marion Bertha. She is responsible for two disappearances in this area. Found both bodies, but can prove nothing. Suspects she works with male accomplice. Signed Sheffield. Male accomplice? Oh, man. You're going to get Chester killed. I hope not, Doc. Well, if she's got tickets for both of them on this afternoon stage to London. I know. And says she won't be married anywhere else. She wants to get Chester and his money away from Dodge, Doc. Well, then, what are you doing about it? 
I'm going to give her enough rope to hang herself. I just hope Chester doesn't get caught in the same noose. Goodbye, Miss Kitty. Somehow this just don't seem real. It's real enough, Chester. <laughs> Let's take a look at that lovely creature next to you. <laughs> Hello, my dear. Goodbye, Doc. Bye-bye. Bye, Kitty. Bye. 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 Bye for the party. Ain't nobody seen Mr. Dillon. No, I haven't. Where is Matt, Doc? Well, I don't know, but he better have... Oh, well, here he comes. <laughs> oh, and just look at him. Yes, he is. He's wearing a tie, Kitty. And his Sunday suit. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon, did you come to just insist that I get off this stagecoach? No, Chester, I'm going to ride to Larned. You didn't think I'd miss that wedding of yours, did you? Oh, yes, no. All right, Jack, let's get this stage going. It's 2 o'clock. All right, Marshal. Everybody out of the way. Well, hope everything works out all right, Doc. So do I, Kitty. So do I. Marshal Dillon, I don't understand why you're coming along. Chester and I have been friends for a long time, Miss Cayley. This is the least I can do. Friends. Huh. I thought we were friends, Mr. Dillon, until I seen you all dressed up for my wedding. The poor darling. Chester, dear, you'll be happy. Yeah. After all, love conquers all. <laughs> love. I never knew a man could get into such a mess. Mr. Dillon, I was just funning. There's at least four or five other ladies that I wrote to. That I've got. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, I reckon you have. All right. Stop them horses, mister. Well, what's this all about? Grab Bertha, Chester, and keep her quiet. What? What is this, a hold-up, Mr. Dillon? Just keep yourself and the woman out of it, Chester. Yes, sir. All right, driver, jump down. I said keep her quiet. Ah, Bertha, it's good. Throw up your hands. Oh, it's bad. It's the marshal. My husband. You shot my husband. Oh, Fred. Fred. Why did you bring the marshal? Who's she, oh, Mr. Dillon? She called him her husband, and she was fixing to marry me. No, she wasn't, Chester. She was going to have him kill you. She was? Then you wasn't letting her take me off to get married at all. You was only trying to capture her. Yeah, I had to have both of them, Chester. He's a killer. She may be, too. Well, why didn't you tell me, Mr. Dillon? I could have helped. Uh, you did, Chester. You helped a lot. I did? I did? Well, say now. I reckon I did it that, Mr. Dillon. by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Tom Hanley with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Joseph Kearns, and Vic Caron. Harley Bear is Chester, Howie McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Thank you.